Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Baldridge Foundation's quarterly webinar. As a reminder, due to the high number of participants, everyone will be kept on mute during the presentations. If you have questions, please submit them to the moderator in the questions box located on your control screen. Presenters will answer questions at the end of each presentation. Here is today's agenda. Lindell Field Superintendent and CEO of Tri-County Tech in Bartsville, Oklahoma, a 2018 Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award winner, will be followed by questions from the audience, a brief update from the foundation, and a brief update from both the Baldridge Program and the Alliance for Performance Excellence, with a few closing remarks. Now let me introduce Lindell Fields. Lindell is an education thought leader with more than three decades of experience, working his way up through Oklahoma's career tech system. He has now served as superintendent and CEO of Tri-County Tech in Bartsville, Oklahoma since 2008. A Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award winner in 2018, Tri-County has reconstructed its culture and education quality placing it among Fortune 500's best places to work for four consecutive years. Lindell believes that no student should be denied access to an education based upon their inability to pay, nor should they be graduate suffocating in debt. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a true honor and friend to introduce my good friend, Mr. Lindell Fields. Lindell? Oh, thank you, Al. Good morning. The best way I believe to illustrate Tri-County's story is to tell you about one of our students, Brianna. Brianna came to us full of fear and anxiety, scared to death, but she knew she was gonna take care of that two-year-old that walked through those doors with her that day. She had to get an education. Brianna knew if she was gonna take care of baby number two that would arrive in just about six months, she had to get an education. And Brianna knew if she was gonna break the cycle of poverty that had held its grip on her family for generations, then she had to get an education. Brianna came to us that day like hundreds do each year with a hope and a dream and a desire to do better. Brianna might as well have been standing at the foot of Mount Everest. She had so many obstacles in her way. She was standing there with a backpack and maybe a pair of tennis shoes and a rope, not near enough to get to the top of the mountain, but she had courage, she had grit, she had a desire for a better life. So she came to us that day, she wanted to get into our nursing program. Well, of course she did. Our most competitive program, we're often 7, 80, sometimes 90 students are vying for the precious 22 slots each semester, but Brianna, was indeed determined. She began the rigorous process to get enrolled and lo and behold, she got accepted. There was just one hurdle left to cross and it was a big one. You see, Brianna didn't have any, have any money. She didn't have the $4,500 needed to pay the tuition. $4,500 that paid for the uniforms, the books, the fees, the whole nine yards. An absolute bargain by higher education standards, but for Brianna, $4,500 might as well have been the Great Wall of China with her on one side and prosperity on the other. But fortunately for Brianna, Tri-County holds sacred the idea that no student will be denied an education based upon their inability to pay. So Brianna was in. Brianna represents the hundreds and hundreds of students we have each year that come to us with a hope and a dream and a desire for a better life, but you know, Tri-County started a similar journey, a journey one full of fear and anxiety, you know, the kind of fear that accompanies change, the kind of anxiety that accompanies the unknown. But we knew that if we were gonna help the Briannas of the world by the masses, we had to subscribe to something bigger than any one of us could accomplish alone, a program, a process, a routine. So we began to look around and we landed on this thing called Baldridge. And it's that journey I'd like to share with you today, friends. A journey that started back in 2003, but don't let that scare you. We were just dabbling in the beginning. 
Today, I'll reveal to you a little bit of our journey, and I'll also share with you five mantras, mantras that are going to seem very simple today, but through our hard work and sweat, we bulled out the complexity to come up with a mantra that we believe you can put to work in your organization, your businesses, immediately. So we'll share a little bit of that story, and there's certainly no way we can begin to cover all of it today, but if you'll hang with me today, I'll share with you how we can continue the conversation later in this thing we call performance excellence, something that we can't do alone, but together we can accomplish some really, really wonderful things. In 2003, Tri-County attended our first Quest conference, and it was a special conference for us. We were a little bit naive. We were young and green and we went to the national conference in washington dc the hilton there and it was special because several people had never been on an airplane and we went to the big city to learn about this thing called baldrige and that was about all we remember from that year some of you may be in a similar situation where you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose from all the information and activity that's coming at you from this thing called Baldrige and we felt the same way, but we went back in 2004 and the same thing happened. A lot of drinking from a from a fire hose, but in 2005 we gained some clarity. It was a good year because Jinx Public Schools had won the award. Jinx is in South Tulsa, Oklahoma and our neighbors to the south. So we got to celebrate with Jinx, but the one organization that stands out to me still to this day was a Baldrige winner back in 2005. It was Bronson Hospital, and my colleague and I, Tammy Strobel, were in a meeting where Bronson was sharing their journey, and they put a chart up on the wall in this incredibly complex organization of thousands of employees, tens of thousands of patients, customers, dozens of campuses were able to clearly articulate who they were, what they did, and how they did it in such a way as newbie to Baldridge could understand it. They boiled the complexity out of all of it. And I knew at that very moment that if Tri-County could clarify who we were, what we did, and how we did it in such a way that others could understand it, where we could understand it, then we might have something going for us. We now refer to that as what we call the Tri-County way, who we are, what we do, and how we do it. As I mentioned, our journey started a long time ago. And don't let that that scary because those early years were really formative years, foundational years, years of just trying to figure out what we wanted to be when we grew up. Back then, we were talking about getting the right people on the bus, and we were talking about who was in the right seats, and when the fact of the matter is, we didn't know exactly where the bus the bus was going, and Baldridge helped us to figure out where the bus was going. We began to focus on our vision and back then we went to leadership team retreats we still do those today and i believe that's one of our best practices we have two retreats a year and it was at those retreats that we identified our vision of inspiring success through life changing learning experiences it's our guiding star it's everything to us and every year since then we've evaluated our vision to determine if it's still relevant still valid and it still is today at another one of those conferences, sitting around a fire pit in southern Oklahoma in a beautiful setting, we outlined our values. Our vision is who we are. Our vision is our values are how we do what we do. Our values are a great place to work, leadership by all, investing in the community, and student focused. Again, we've evaluated those every year and they're still as relevant today as they were all those years ago. Our values are non-negotiable, they're clear and clearly understandable. Values that everybody can understand and pour into. So those were, those were enlightening years for us, 2003, 2008 to 2008, where we were building the foundation Along those years, about 2006, we thought we'd get serious about our journey, and we got involved with the Oklahoma Quality Foundation. Most states have a quality foundation, and 
we submitted an application, a 25 page application for a commitment to quality, the first of three levels in Oklahoma at the time. And it was a beautiful masterpiece. I often say it was a Steinbeck, a true, true work of art. We now look back on it and uh, we kind of blush a little, we blush a little bit. It's more like Dick and Jane these days, but you got to start somewhere. And as a result of us starting, and as a result of learning about the criteria, mantra number one was born at Tri-County. Mantra number one is when you try to be everything to everybody, you can't be anything to anybody. We knew that was important back then, but it's just as important to us today, even a year after earning the Baldridge Award, when you try to be everything to everybody, you can't be anything to anybody. Back then, we, we didn't have a, an idea that we didn't like. We tried them. We tried them all. So our journey was really about doing less, not more. And I like to tell the story of my son, Blake, a freshman in college this year. Sweet Bird will be home Friday. I can't wait to see him. But, you know, in middle school, he played all the sports, football, baseball, basketball. And he was pretty good at all of them. You know, kids can be that way in middle school. But we aren't playing middle school in the world of work, are we? You want to be pretty good at a lot of stuff, well, that's fine. But if you want to be great, you have to figure out what you can be great at. So we began to work on our core, our reason for being. Tri-County is a technical school. We train dental hygienists, nurses, cosmetologists, culinary arts. High school and adult students share the same classrooms often, and sometimes we bring in businesses from the community, but it's ancillary to our core product. We train them in things like leadership and safety, and that helps to pay our bills. But everything goes back to our core, just as an athlete, everything goes back to strengthening the core. And that's what we realized back then. In 2008, I became the superintendent at Tri-County, and we rolled out Vision 2020 that year. And we decided that we would boldly move away from those things we couldn't be the best in the world at. Vision 2020 was intended to establish us as one of the premier education institutions anywhere in the United States. We knew back then that a vision was important, not just a vision statement, a vision, a bold vision. Everybody wants to work towards something significant. Everybody needs to know what the vision is in an organization. Once you know what the vision is, you can begin to grow the culture capable of reaching something significant. And we rolled out a vision that established we wanted to become one of the top places to work in the United States, that we wanted to grow our enrollments from 8,000 to 15,000. Last year, we surpassed 23,000. We wanted to grow our foundation so no student would be denied an education based upon their inability to pay. And then finally, we wanted to work toward the Baldridge Award, something that we earned in 2018. So we were real clear about what we wanted to be when we grew up, but that meant doing away from those things we couldn't be the very best at. And that's what we worked on for, for several years. But again, I have to tell you, we weren't very, very, very serious about the criteria. We were just still dabbling and um, working our way. But in 2013, we, um, we got serious. It had been seven years since our first application, and we felt it was time for application number two, an application that was an absolute masterpiece if I've ever seen one. As I already mentioned, it made the first one look like Dick and Jane. We sure had a good one this time, and uh, we thought it would uh, help us achieve the top award in the state so we could start playing at the national level. Well, um, the examiners came as they always do with an application in Oklahoma and uh, they didn't quite agree it was ready for that top award, but uh, uh, we we learned we still had, had some work to do. Uh, we probably were in high school sports at that time. We thought we were in college, but we just had so, so much to learn. It's a lot to learn. We recognized that we were still doing too much. We were trying to be everything to everybody. And I have to tell you, every time I give one of these presentations or one of these webinars, that's the one thing people tell me at the, at the end is we're trying to be everything to everybody. So it was about that time that 
we recognize that our students were core to everything. And that's when mantra number two was born. If you're not taking care of the students, take care of someone who is. For us, our students are our customers. For you, it might be a patient. It might be a, a retail customer. It might be a manufacturing client. But if you're not taking care of the student, take care of someone who is. See, we had frontline people, teachers, counselors that were dealing with the students on a daily basis. But the rest of us, well, may not have had interaction every day. For me, for example, that meant I was support staff. My job's to provide the frontline staff. And for us, that was the silver bullet. The people in the cafeteria, the maintenance folks, they recognized instantly they had something to offer that their job was to help the frontline staff be the best version of themselves. And we knew if we took care of our people, they would take care of our students. So we had, had eliminated a lot of stuff. We were getting leaner and meaner, but we still had so much we were, we were doing. We were running track. We were serious about our diet. We had eliminated coffee, sugar, and caffeine, as I like to say. And then something magical happened, something that wasn't part of our vision, something uh, that came about, what I call, unintended positives. We recognized that the federal funding that we were receiving was a, a weight around our ankle as we were running track, a five pound weight that was holding us back. As we applied the criteria to our operations, we recognized that the federal funding was an inappropriate, ineffective use of our time. And it was costing us precious local dollars so we made the bold decision to move away from federal funding and we haven't looked back. As a result of those decisions, we now have flexible programs that aren't monitored or judged by a third party, but by ourselves locally that have allowed us to uh, help students. You know, there's 50% of the kids in the United States in most communities who graduate from high school and don't go to post-secondary education, career tech or college. Some go to work, some go to the military, but most flounder for many, many years. We recognized we had kids that were 28, 29, 30 years old. Life uh, was okay, but not what they had dreamed it would be. A couple kids can't quit their jobs to go to school full time, can't afford to go to college in many cases, but they can sit around the dining room table and see the light at the end of the tunnel with our flex programs where they can go to school two nights a week and one or two Saturdays a month and get a job that can create the kind of life they've always dreamed of. Tri-County, they can do that for about $3,000. And I tell you that to let you know that these, is the, these are the kinds of innovation that have happened as a result of our performance excellence journey in 2014 we submitted our third application and we earned the Excellence Award in Oklahoma, the top award in our state, which qualified us to, to submit a Baldridge application. But we learned from that ad application that our, our first two weren't great. I, I refer to our second application as a John Grisham novel, pretty good read, but a whole, not a whole lot of substance. We kept learning and trying to improve our, our business model We'd done away with federal funding. We didn't want to raise tuition. We haven't raised tuition in over 10 years, but we still had a business to run. We recognized precious dollars were being spent on things that weren't our core. Significant focus on our local controllable, what we call local controllable revenue, dollars that we can control. We don't have a lot of control over the state funding that we receive, about 18% of our funding, but we wanted to be in charge of what we can control. And mantra number three was born at Tri-County, probably the, the most fun. Spend Tri-County's money like it's your grandmother's social security check. Again, these are relevant for every organization. You may want to come up with something different, a little um, more fun or maybe not so fun, but you get the idea. We all have precious dollars in our organization and they need to be spent like they're precious dollars. And when things get tight around Tri-County, we, we up the ante by saying it's grandmother's only source of income. A big part of our local controllable revenue is our foundation. 
Our foundation ensures no students denied an education based upon their inability to pay. It ensures students can get to school when they don't have gas or the bad car batteries gone dead. It's just temporary assistance. And the thing that I'm most proud of at Tri-County is that 100% of our staff for the last five years have contributed to the foundation in the last two years that has been in excess of $80,000 from 91 educators. $80,000 that have helped uh, dreams come true and helped folks like Brianna, who by the way, uh, had baby number two on a Thursday and was back to school on a Monday. Our foundation helped Brianna stay in school. So we were really getting pretty lean in 2015. Uh, we knew we weren't quite ready for the big leagues. We didn't submit an application. We continued to work on our core and work on our diet. And we adopted mantra number four, less is more, stick to the core. Less is more, stick to the core, self-explanatory. Spend your time, your resources, and your energy on what your core is. One of our Vision 2020 goals came to reality in 2015, and that was we were named to Fortune's Top Places to Work, something we've been on uh, the list four times. In 2019, we had our best year ever, the year after obtaining the, the Baldridge Award. Uh, we knew it was real. Our KPMs went up in every category. We had a really good year. Uh, sadly, though, uh, we didn't make Great Places to Work list the fifth time. We were considered a great place to work certified, but we didn't make the list in our best year ever. And so what that tells us is we never really quite reached the destination, not to be a Debbie Downer. It's just we all have work to do. And that's why championship teams don't always win the Super Bowl two years in a row. A great place to work is a competitive uh, situation. And the other simply did better than us, even though our marks went up in every category so we've rolled up our sleeves to figure out how we can do better with our with our culture so um 2015 we created the office of quality uh, we uh, asked somebody our deputy superintendent now to be the full-time chief quality officer performance excellence is a full-time job it's not something you can do on the fringes and we we learned that if I had to do it over again, you know, you hate to say you want to change anything, but we would have created an office of quality earlier. Same year, we hired a performance excellence coach, a Baldridge coach, uh, Glenn and Kay with the Baldridge coach, and uh, they helped us. At Tri-County, we, um, we don't have much turnover. Most of our senior leaders have been with us about 20 years. And so one of the things that concerns me and and that's this idea of groupthink. Um, you, you begin to think alike, talk alike, and uh, sometimes you can't see the trees for the forest. A Baldridge coach, a performance excellence coach can do that for you. And as helpful as that was to us, uh, we also began to develop our folks as leaders, really investing in our people. And uh, we have unlimited professional development in our organization. And that's been very, very successful for us. In 2016, we submitted our first Baldridge application. Now, it had been a full 13 years since our first application. Our Steinbeck had truly arrived this time. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and certainly, it put all the other applications to shame. So if we had been running track all those years, we were still doing too much. We decided to run the 4 by 100 And just an analogy to tell you just how focused you have to be and what you're trying to be in your organization, what products and services you're trying to offer. And when you've been on a journey this long, you have to re you have fatigue sometimes and you can lose focus. And mantra number four, no, excuse me, mantra number five was born that year. It's not about what you do in a day, rather what you do daily that matters. It's not about what you do in a day, rather what you do daily that matters. And that had such a profound effect on our organization in terms of performance excellence. But I have to tell you in the last 18 months how that has helped us as individuals in our personal lives do things that many thought were impossible. And it just works, just works well. That same year, we wanted to find out how really good we were. So we adopted net promoter score to 
to evaluate our customer engagement. And I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that I thought NPS was uh, measuring satisfaction. If you're new to this, there's a difference between engagement and satisfaction. And we were in measuring engagement. We learned that we stacked up pretty well. Our numbers met or exceeded that of Costco and Ritz Carlton and still do to this day. We also have posted a 94% completion retention rate with our students. And we've been over 90% for many years now. 2017 submitted our second application and man was it good. It made our first application uh, look pretty dismal, but it earned us a site visit. And the examiners came and we, we met some wonderful people from around the country and of course, I thought all of our applications were masterpieces, and um, I think I think the examiners learned a lot from us, but we uh, learned so much, so much more from them, and uh, we uh, found out we just had a long way to go, and we continued continued to work. And that year, we were recognized with um, leadership um, best practices um, from the Baldridge world for uh, leadership and workforce, I believe. And we got to go to the Baldridge Conference and share our best practices. And it was just a, an honor to do that. In 2018, we submitted our, our second, excuse me, our third national application. It also earned us a, a site visit. And reflecting back on that, that application, that 50 page application, after it was submitted, uh, we knew exactly what we had to do to uh, cross the finish line. Everything became clear. We finally had our our Baldridge uh, boiled down into clarity. And the first thing we had to do was go back to mantra number one. When you try to be everything to everybody, you can't be anything to anybody. And this diet I've referred to with you over the last 20 or so minutes, uh, this it was time for a cleanse. You know, a performance excellence sometimes isn't for the faint of heart and certainly not easy, but we knew from the criteria in our journey that it was time to eliminate a division in our organization that was siphoning precious resources from us. A division that had been part of our organization for 50 years, we knew it would make some of our customer segments happy, but we also knew we have a business to run and it wasn't contributing to our core like it needed to. So we eliminated what we call community edit at Tri-County. We also put a term on our best processes in our organization to bring clarity to that. We developed what's called 5D. So 13 years after seeing that Bronson chart in that Baldridge breakout session, we had clarity. 5D for us is you dream it, you design it, you drive it, you deliver it to the customer, and then finally, you dissect it. And um, that sounds simple. There's a lot of parts that I would love to break those down for you at a different time, but it brought clarity to us and certainly um, helped us as the examiners came that year. And uh, we truly did have our masterpiece application, but it was, um, it was who we really were. And it was clear that, uh, we were following the practices and that did indeed earn us a, a Baldridge Award and we got to go to present and receive that award, award certainly the highlight of my professional career and the highlight of Tri-County and a big one, big one for Oklahoma. So something new today I wanna share with you is many of you are in a different parts of your journey. I'd like to outline for you a roadmap to help you in your journey. The first thing I wanna to suggest to you, regardless of where you are in your journey, it was a turning point for us. And it came from John C. Maxwell, the number one leadership guru of all time, written more leadership material than any other author in the history of the world. And John Maxwell's number one best-selling book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and the Law of the Lid is the number one law in that book and it says that an organization can't grow beyond its leadership capacity if you want to grow as an organization you need to grow your leadership and that's what i think we can all do better at 
Implement leadership retreats regardless. Those have been game changers for us. We break bread, we work hard, and they're game changers for us. Hire a performance excellence coach sooner than later to help you in your journey. Quality is a full-time job. Quality is a full-time job. If you have the capacity and you're in a position to affect workforce, hire a coach to help you be the best version of you. Tiger Woods would never go into the Masters without a coach, and 33% of Fortune 500 CEOs have a coach. We all can do better. Hire a coach. The biggest question I get asked is, what if my CEO or my leadership team doesn't buy in? Well, I think of it like this. You know, we can't force anybody to do anything, but I think about the time or two, you, you go on a diet, you start working out, you start feeling pretty good. You lose four or five pounds, nobody notices. You lose 10 pounds, people start to notice. You lose 20 pounds, people ask, what are you doing? You start living this journey, people are gonna notice something different and they're gonna wanna be a part of something. And the final thing I'd leave with you there is just start, just start. So as we started today, I said that we couldn't begin to cover the entire journey, but I'd give you an opportunity to continue the conversation as a favor to the Baldridge Foundation, my good friend Al Faber. If you'd like to continue this conversation, my staff's opened up my calendar uh, for 10 30-minute appointments for those of you that might want to continue the conversation, take a deeper dive, share your journey, or just pick my brain. Uh, feel free to jump on the link we're going to share with you in just a minute and schedule a time. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to expand my network and hear your story. Tri-County's new mantra is to help other organizations become great places to work with world-class results, and we want to help you do just that. And if I can help you with that, it would be my honor. So no dabblers, please. Only those that are serious about this journey or serious about their professional growth. I'd love to help you if I can. So as I close today, remember our mantras. Our mantras are, when you try to be everything to everybody, you can't be anything to anybody. If you're not taking care of the student, take care of someone who is. Spend Tri-County's money like it's grandmother's social security. Less is more, stick to core, my favorite. And finally, it's not about what you do in a day, rather what you do daily. So friends, regardless of where you are in your journey, stick to the course. Apply a heavy dose of Brianna style grit. By the way, Brianna graduated as a, and is a very successful nurse taking care of those two babies. Stay the course, apply the grit, and I promise you, whatever your dreams for your organization are, they can indeed come true. It's been my pleasure to visit with you today. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for letting me be with you. Thanks, Lindell. That was an outstanding presentation. We do have a few questions out there in the field. And the first question is, at what point do you think the full team out there at Tri-County Tech uh, truly committed to the Baldridge effort? Great question. Well, I've alluded to the, the long journey and the early years of really dabbling. So that would have been about 2013, 13. Uh, when we submitted uh, our second state application. Some might argue it was 2014. So, so five years ago. Five years ago. Okay, we've got a second question. And, and the second question is, uh, do you will you continue to use Baldridge at Tri County Tech uh, into the future? And do you see yourself reapplying for the award at some point? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's also a great question. Without a doubt, the criteria is our fiber. It's hardwired into us. And you know, my fear is that you know you, there's a letdown. And and to ensure that there's not a letdown, uh, Baldridge, what we call Baldridge 2.0, is a part of our Vision 2025 that we unveiled this past August. So yes, we do believe we'll apply for the award because what that'll do is keep us on track. And if you're capable of winning the award, you know that you can't you can't fake the award, that you're doing everything you can to affect your customers and your community 
and all of your stakeholders. So most definitely we're gonna keep with it and, and apply again. The next question we have is, do you have a board of directors and if they all bought into Baldridge and, and provided you support? Yes, we have a board of directors, five folks elected by the public from our community and they have bought in and a part of our strategic planning process is for our, our board to approve uh, not only our vision 20 and vision 2025 but our annual operational plan that uh, begins our annual planning process and cascades through our work groups and our individual uh, action plan so they really uh they sign off on everything and they all got to be a part of the Baldridge site visits and interviewed and i guess they did pretty good so yeah they're they're, they're all bought in uh, Linda, I just want to thank you one more time. Uh, outstanding job. That concludes our questions for you today. Great. Great. And we truly appreciate you taking the time to tell the uh, Tri-County story. Thank you, Alvin. My pleasure. Well, this is our strategy map here at the foundation. Just a reminder that everything we do falls within our strategy of advocacy, fundraising, board development, and operations. <laughs> The next thing I wanna do is thank all of you out there who gave on Giving Tuesday uh, earlier here in December. It was a 168% increase over 2018 giving. So once again, to all those people out there and the people you see on the screen who were major contributors, thank you again for thinking of the foundation and your philanthropy. You can soon watch for a press release from the foundation on the 2020 Foundation Awards. The Board of Directors approved in November this slate of awardees, which will receive the appropriate award next to their name at the Quest for Excellence Conference in March of this year. Particularly, we would like to recognize Paul Worstel, former CEO of ProTech and National Award recipient for achieving the David Spong Lifetime Achievement Award, and Jane Pope, who will receive the Harry S. Hertz Leadership Award and speak to the Baldridge Fellows at the conference. As a reminder, um, anybody can submit someone for a foundation award and the foundation award handbook and forms are found on our website. The foundation recently entered into an agreement with CHIME, the College of Healthcare Information Management Executives earlier this month. CHIME and the Baldridge Foundation will co-brand from this point forward, CHIME's Most Wired Award. And the Most Wired Award goes to hospitals and hospital systems around the country who achieve certain metrics to show and to demonstrate uh, all of their IT capabilities and in servicing their customers. So we're really excited about this new program uh, along with CHIME and the awardees will be recognized both at CHIME's CEO Forum and the Baldridge Quest for Excellence Conference. As a reminder to everybody, the foundation's radio show Leader Dialogue uh, website has outstanding podcasts on a variety of topics, not just quality and performance excellence, but leadership topics as, as well. And on average, they're downloaded 124,000 times per week now. And you can see a list of on the left-hand side of previous speakers. And so each Friday at 1 p.m., you can dial into Radio X either online or you can download us a podcast and listen to your convenience on an airplane, bus, or anywhere else. Baldridge Foundation Institute for Performance Excellence has a number of white papers that are available for free and for download on our website. Uh, one of the more popular ones is here, Oversight of Performance Organizational Performance Management. It was written by our board chair, Dr. George Benson, and is particularly interesting to boards of directors who are trying to manage performance excellence within their organization, and not just Baldridge-based organizations, but basically any organization. The planned giving program is also on the website. It's that time of year when people think about making a donation in terms of their estate and planned giving. Uh, we make it as easy as possible to do that. So if you are looking at a planned giving activity of some kind, please visit the Baldridge Foundation website and consider us in your plans. 
Uh, Bob Fangmar could not be with us today, unfortunately, so I'm going to brief his slides, and there's only a couple of them. First of all, he wanted to recognize and congratulate the 2019 Baldridge Award recipients that you see here. Uh, they had a total of six this year, and it's been quite some time since we've had six national award recipients uh, coming from nonprofit, healthcare, and education. So it should be another exciting year for Quest. They are now recruiting for Baldridge Fellows for 2020. Uh, the program deadline ends actually uh, today, but for those who want to apply, uh, you can put in the application uh, probably over the weekend here, and I'm sure they'll consider it. Or if they don't get you in a seat this year, put you in for uh, one of the first available seats for the following year. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, one of the things that was very beneficial and very helpful to organizations, to researchers, to um, consultants, was the 1999-2006 blinded data uh, that was released in 2010. The 2007 to 2019 data is going to be prepared and likely released this spring, so you'll want to watch for that. A reminder that the Baldwin Framework revision is about to begin. And so we are somewhere in between right now, community and public feedback and focus groups. And we'll shortly get to drafting the uh, for circulated comment. Net promoter scores and other satisfaction scores continue to show that the Baldrige program is exceeding in just about every customer consumer category, and then internally with examiner training, uh, just doing an outstanding job in terms of everything that they do. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brian Lassiter, the chair of the Alliance for Performance Excellence for a few comments. And Brian, I'll flip your slide for you. A reminder that the Alliance is uh, considered the front door of the Baldridge Enterprise. We represent 29 individual local, state, regional, and sector boulder space programs across the nation, covering all 50 states and uh, several sectors and industries. A couple of uh, brief updates since the last webinar we all, we all joined a couple of months ago. Uh, many of you attended the Baldur's Bowl, Fold Conference that is hosted and managed by the Alliance all about six weeks or so ago in Nashville. It was a, a terrific crowd of about 300 folks, um, 200 of which attended pre-conference workshops um, that were um, well received and great learning, great networking, and really excited to uh, successfully close that conference. The uh, Tennessee, Tennessee Center for Performance Excellence in collaboration with seven Alliance members hosted a fantastic conference, so thank you for that. The next Baldrige Fall Conference, just for your calendars, is already set. It's October 21st and 2nd in Milwaukee. Um, I'm really excited about this one coming, too. It's going to be hosted in very unique space. I want to come on that. It will not be traditional hotel conference space, but um, pretty uh, creative space, uh, an equally solid program to, to our past, and will be hosted and managed by the Wisconsin Center for Perform Performance Excellence and the Michigan uh, Quality Council. The Alliance continues to work on several task forces. Some are internal to the Alliance only. Uh, we're just about, fin just about to wrap up and finish our work on providing guidelines for lower levels of our tiered award programs. Uh, we do have a standard that cuts across all Alliance members for the top tier award it was set several years ago so that we have consistency at that top at that top level as a feeder system into the national program and the eligibility to apply for the award. Now we're trying to um, establish guidelines and best practices for some of the lower levels. That works just about ready to wrap up. We did successfully complete a task force in collaboration with Communities of Excellence 2026, a partner of the Alliance and a partner of the whole enterprise as they continue work on bringing the principles of Baldridge and performance excellence into communities across the country. Uh, to date, there I, I think the number is 18 U.S. communities that are using this framework, and now three cohorts to advance these concepts and to address community challenges and, and improve community outcomes. So the work the Alliance did in, in collaboration with COE 2026 was to establish a five-year vision of how some of the operations would be executed in partnership with Alliance member programs. Uh, so that initial work is now complete and uh, additional work will happen in, in 2020 to establish action plans and begin to execute on some of that, some of those efforts. We're also continuing to work on some of the uh, 
enterprise-wide task forces that the foundation and the program itself uh, continue to work on as well. So if you're not currently involved at a local level, the uh, website to find us all is BaldridgeLions.org. Uh, I know many of you on the call probably already are as examiners or board members or helping with outreach or in other ways, but I, I strongly encourage you to get involved at a local level if you're not already doing so. Thanks, Al, and with that, that's uh, my update for the quarter. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it and appreciate everything you and all the Alliance program directors are doing out there around the country. Just want to remind everybody out there that after the webinar, uh, the chief operating officer here, Jerry Reese, is going to send out an email link to Lindell Fields so that you can connect with him and uh, continue your conversations one on one. I want to thank Lindell again for being such an outstanding presenter today. Uh, again, the Tri-County story is just, just an amazing story, and we truly appreciate all that you're doing out there to help spread the word with Baldridge. Thank you, everybody. Special thanks to our donors, and we look forward to you seeing you again at our next quarterly webinar. Have a great day.